Now, though it was finally broadcast to the UK audience last night, and as the fallout continues from Meghan and Harry's explosive interview, opinions continue to be divided. Well, we're joined now by Prince Charles' biographer Tom Bauer and historian Kate Williams to discuss their reactions. So, Tom, let's start with you, first of all. And like a lot of people, you were shocked by the interview that you saw. And, and you feel like this is really going to divide the nation. I do, and I think it has divided the nation and made us all, many of us, very unhappy on either side of the argument. I just found that uh, Harry and uh, Meghan, having said that they were setting up in California to spread wellness and love and sincerity, have done the exact opposite. They have dumped on their family, dumped on Britain, uh, and have <laughs> just caused terrible unhappiness. But, I mean, many people would say that they were, you know, finally speaking out, felt the freedom mm. to speak out. Um, you've, you've said that you th think she appears to be or appeared to be rather naive about what she was getting into. Well, I don't think this is naive. After all, she was 36, a divorcee, a very experienced woman in America and around the world. I don't think that she was naive. I think that she was, uh, she went in with her eyes wide open. And I think that uh, she didn't want, probably, to serve and be silent. Well, that's the job of the, the royal family, that they're not there to campaign. And I think that in the end, the uh, baby shower she had in New York for half a million dollars set the seal. She wanted to remain a celebrity. She wanted to, she probably thought she was marrying the Kardashians, not the Windsors, and got a terrible shock uh, and uh, went into a depression. I just found the interview raised many more questions about her than about the royal family. I find it very Can hard I just ask to... You, when you say that about her, like, how, what, what are you basing that on, saying that she would but rather be married into the Kardashians? Isn't that just a sort of... That's your, that's your opinion, and I think sort of seeing what we've seen recently and what she said from her own mouth, isn't it quite a dangerous one, knowing what we know now? On the contrary, I think that what we've seen from her own mouth is a, a woman who spent a long, long time preparing for this performance and pouring enormous amount of bile on the monarch, a 94-year-old woman, on the, a royal family who she knows can't answer back in the way that she is now spoken. And I just think it was completely unbalanced. And I don't think we should take her at her word. Um, I think just, just alone, the fact that she said, of course, she hadn't got married in front of us all at Windsor, but three days earlier, when we know that wasn't the case at all. When she said that Harry was told, or she was then told, that uh, Archie couldn't become a prince because he's got brown skin, who, who would have said that? Can you imagine that conversation? And can you so imagine why, a conversation... Why would they both, in which case... I mean, the, I think that as far as the, the, the sort of ceremony three days before the wedding um, was a was sort of a, a blessing that they wanted to have on their own. I don't know why I'm standing up for them on that one, because I hosted the one three days later when we all thought it was for the first time. However, you know, that there are, as we've always, as we've always been, we've been trying to do over the past couple of days, see both sides of the story. And I do want to say, you said you, she went into depression. I don't want to lighten that, because this is a woman who has discussed the fact that she was potentially suicidal and didn't get the help she needed. That is also quite important. Um, but, but what you're saying there, uh, 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 essentially, is that they went on onto uh, uh, this interview with Oprah Winfrey and for two hours didn't tell the truth? Well, I think that they told their truth. And I think that Oprah That's Winfrey... That's all you can do, isn't it? Isn't that no, what we expect no. from people? No, no, absolutely not. Or we expect from the interviewer to challenge their truth. I think that's the whole difference, that they um, made allegations which I don't believe to be truthful. After all, four people in the royal palaces have said that they were bullied by Meghan. Uh, are they not telling the truth, that she's a bully? Are well, they maybe lying? That, maybe, but uh, they equally, are? that's their truth. Uh, who, 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 who can, who can define, who can define bullying? And that'll be, that'll be investigated. What would Prince Charles make of this? Oh, he'll be horrified. I mean, he's been horrified for ages. And as you know, my biography of Charles is amazingly critical of him, and I think he changed his behaviour uh, as a result of the book. But on the other hand, uh, he feels undoubtedly betrayed, uh, doubly betrayed by the, uh, by the interview. And in the end, what I found ra rather naive of Harry is that he said well, he was cut off financially. Well, the point is that why should the British taxpayer have paid a million pounds plus a year for his security if he decided to decamp uh, to California. 
Right, well, let's was, let's um, let's bring in <laughs> Professor Williams now because um, Professor Williams, this is a is another side to the to the story here, um, and uh, and you are a historian. You know how the palace reacts to these things. Are you, I assume, unsurprised that currently there hasn't been any word from Buckingham Palace? There hasn't been any word from Buckingham Palace. We understand that they're working on something, but there does clearly have to be a statement to deal with these, what's been said, chiefly, as we were saying, that, you know, there's two chief points here that have to be dealt with. Uh, number one, that Meghan uh, suffered suicidal thoughts. She had a very severe mental health crisis. She went to ask for help and she was told, you can't go for help because it'll make the institution look bad, that there was overall no support that there was, and we, you know, we know it's a matter of fact that there was racist coverage of Meghan and sexist and racist coverage. And yes, there was nice coverage on the day of the wedding, although not all. And that was one day. But before that, we have to remember that the first time that we knew Harry was dating Meghan was because not because we got a ski photo or a cafe photo that we often have with royals and famous people. It was because he put out a statement saying she was suffering sexist and racist coverage and also invasion. And he was worried about her, her security and couldn't protect her. And that's been the theme throughout, that constantly we've seen this racist coverage that whatever other royals do, from you know, eating avocados, which they touched on in Oprah, but also things like Frogmore Cottage. I mean, every royal lives in a big uh, royal crown property, which is renovated with crown money. No one really blinked an eyelid about this before. Suddenly, Meghan and Harry move into a small cottage, comparatively to other royal properties, very small comparatively, and it's renovated with 2.4 million. And suddenly, there's this mass national meltdown hey, over can it. can I ask Everything you then, what, what sort of next for the royal family? I mean, there have been royal scandals before. Um, can they survive this? What, what is it going to look like for them? Well, you know, Tom was saying that Meghan and Harry have spread unhappiness, but they were made unhappy in the role. And this was because there was no protection for them. There was no intervention. And they're also saying that not there's no protection, but the, palace, the people within the palace actually lied to protect other royals. Stories were twisted. It, Meghan didn't make, make, make Kate cry at the wedding. That, that, that is, uh, that's been corrected, but no one ever corrected that. And so, you know, Meghan and Harry, it, the, the da it's not that the interview was damaging. Their experience in the royal family was damaging, of racism, of isolation, of lack of support. And that has to be dealt with. And I think it's very clear that they were very uh, keen to uh, praise the Queen, to say that the Queen had nothing to do with any of this. And the racist point about Archie's skin tone was not the Queen of the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, but really, there was a lot here about Charles, that Harry said that Charles... Um, Harry said that Charles wasn't returning his calls and they were trying to work in the half in, half out idea, which could have worked, was a model the minor royals do, was just rejected. Charles stopped returning his calls. So really, I think the royal family does have to engage in this. And let's face it, they, people say they don't speak out, but they do. There have been many royal interviews, Charles at Highgrove, you know, William and Kate yeah. to Mary Berry. Often, and royal statements are made, royal sources often brief. We had the conversation about there was an immediate statement about these bullying claims that was being referred to. Yeah. But Thank you, Kate. You know, we're going to. Sorry to actually, jump you in. About Prince Andrew actually beating up and you know arguing and possibly attacking an aide, and there were no immediate in 2019. Where was the investigation into that? Yeah. So you know, Meghan has been unfairly treated, very unfairly treated, and this does need to be investigated. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you both. both of you. Thank you.